Well, while they're messing around with that, I want to make a couple of announcements. Okay. As a reminder, I am only the messenger. <laughs> the rules of the library are water in this room only. I know some people have brought food. I know some people have brought Starbucks and so on. So just as a reminder, water only. Correct, Jeremy? Oh, correct. All right. Uh, we, we have to pay extra if we're going to do I, was, I, was, I got latched when I walked in the door. So again, I'm just a messenger. Um, as soon as they get us going here, I've got some exciting stuff to, to uh, put up on the... Uh, I watch before, or on the, on the Apple Watch before we do uh, uh, the iPad and so on. Do you all want to hear some stuff about the watch? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> all right. This has got me going, so hopefully the magic work. And we'll get right into it. So the, the watch was announced. How many actually watched the keynote? Okay, a few of you. Um, I watched it, sort of a funny story. I was leaving Park City and uh, the time out there, it came on at 11 o'clock and they were supposed to pick me up at 12 and the guy called me from the van and said, uh, or limo, right George? Uh, and said, I'm gonna be about 10 minutes late. I said, good. <laughs> <laughs> I came out and got into the vehicle and I, I had my iPad going on LTE trying to catch the last 10 minutes of the uh, thing. I had my ear pods in. I was very unsociable and uh, it ended about five minutes later and I apologized to everybody for being so unsociable but I had to hear everything. Um, I saw an interesting comment today that I believe is there's a lot of truth in um, and that is that um, that the watch is a um, is a huge sales motivator for the phone. Yeah. You have to have the phone in order to have the watch, and so it's going to create a new phone. The new phone, <laughs> and it's going to create a lot of demand for the phone, which is Apple's biggest money maker. Uh, I really believe that. Um, so. Okay, with those words, is, I want to ask, is there anybody here for the first time today? First time ever? Yes. Sure. Okay, good. And your first time. Good. Uh, welcome. Um, let me say a few words about the club. Uh, we meet here generally about 95% of the time every Wednesday at 11.30 till quarter till 1. We have a meeting on the third Tuesday. Monday. Third Monday. I want to get that one that's the fourth Monday this month. It's the fourth Monday this month at 5 o'clock to about uh, 6.30 uh, here. And those, there's usually a guest speaker. Um, and uh, if you want to, it's open to the public, so you can come as many times as you'd like. If you want to join, it's $20 a year for single membership, $25 for a family. Our treasurer is in the back, Don. Don has membership forms. You can see him after the meeting. He'll get you one. Um, there are some other benefits to the club that I want to mention. Uh, we have five subscriptions to lynda.com, which is an educational service over the internet. They have thousands of, of, um, of, uh, of uh, movies and so on that you can watch, learning movies on Mac, iPhone, iPad, Excel, whatever you, whatever you like, um, and um, we offer those a week at a time to members. All they need to do is email George, right, Ruben, our our expert on Linda.com, and he'll get you set up for a free week of that uh, as it's available. Uh, and in the summertime, you sometimes they'll email you back and say, "Hey, you want two weeks?" and get you on for a couple weeks. Uh, we also have, we run 10 courses out at Hodges University each year for our members only. They're three hours long. It costs 10 hours per three hour session. Uh, we're on the final phases of that now. We have two, two more to go. Two to go. And what are they? Mail and photo. Mail and photo. So um, you quickly join and you want to go to Hodges. Uh, they're on Monday uh, from uh, the next two Mondays. 
from 1 to 4 o'clock. Do we have any room in the classes? Yes. yes. We do have room. Okay. Um, okay, I've forgotten anything important. Discussion group. Discussion group. We have a board on Yahoo uh, that you would be have access to. You can post any kind of question. And I assure you, you will get plenty of responses and answers to your <laughs> questions. Um, so with that, I'll, I'll mention the meeting formats. Uh, usually the, the first and the third Wednesday meeting in this room is done by our president, Jerry King. Uh, and it's a question and answer on mostly Mac items, but he'll take questions on iPhone, iPad, or just about anything now. Um, on the second uh, Wednesday of the month, I usually chair those meetings and we devote them mostly to just iPad and uh, iPhone type issues, iOS issues. Uh, the, the fourth meeting of the month, George handles iLife uh, stuff, iPhoto, and so on. We have a fifth meeting on the fifth Wednesday of the month, that's usually a guest speaker. I think that covers it. Okay. So now, they announced the iWatch. Um, I don't know, I was pretty impressed with it. But I'm going to run a couple videos for those who did not see that. And um, first we'll run the, um, I'm going to run the Johnny Ives. Everything's so spectacular and perfect in the world. What's up, everyone? John Brenner from Techno Buffalo here, and I've got a hands on with the Apple Watch. And this is in particular the Apple Watch Sport in the 42 millimeter configuration. So let me show you quickly how it works. So if you've got your hand down by your side and you put your hand up, it's going to turn on. I've got my, got my Nikki face here. Uh, if you want to use it, there's a couple things you can do with the UI. If you want to customize your watch face, go ahead and do a force tap, and you go ahead and customize and pick the face that you want. So go ahead and slide to one. We'll stick with Nikki, but go ahead and get customized. And then you can access these different quadrants. So I can hit uh, weather up there, and I can do one touch of the crown. I can change it's going to show up. And the same thing down below, I can just turn the crown, and different options uh, will start to show up depending on what I want to do. If I'm I like, I go hit off, tap it again, and I go back, and now I'm there. Uh, so you've got a digital crown, and a button. the crown is very similar to what you see on a regular watch. They say the best way to use it is not to go like this, but actually just to use one finger and start scrolling. It's a very natural motion. So if I tap that just one time, I'll get access to all the apps. And it's very simple to move around. It's very fluid. Go ahead and pick where you want to go, just with your finger. If you want to zoom in or zoom out, you go ahead and zoom in just with the scroll. So I've got Instagram right there on the middle. If I roll up, it'll open Instagram. If I want to scroll back and see more of what I've got, I can go with That was too fast for my mind, to be honest. Yeah. And for some reason, it's not going to. It's not going to go. It must be um, my default the uh, iPad. Do you have the uh, J the Johnny Eyes one? That's a really good one. I like. Good. We will introduce our new product in early April for $14.99 a month. Apple TV has become the category leader. We are lowering the price today to $69. And I'm pleased to announce today that now every major car brand has committed to delivering car flying. We're going we're gonna to add the research kit over time. Thickest point 
It's just 13.1 millimeters thick. That's the thinnest bat we have ever made as well. It is an all new keyboard, 12 inch display. It's a retina display with 2304 by 1440 pixels. The panel is just 0.88 millimeters thick. This is the thinnest display we've ever built into a bat. We call it the Force Touch Trap Bat. Removing all fans and vents to make it the first fanless battle ever. Powered by Intel Core M, fifth generation, 14 nanometer process. So, what do we do with the rest of that space? We fill it with batteries. And that allows us to deliver all day battery life. One connector supports USB data, display port, power, HDMI, PGA, all through one connector. The technology behind this is a brand new standard called USB C. It's a product that couldn't exist without an invention across many disciplines. The result of all of this is a product that's only 13.1 millimeters thick and weighs just two pounds. We set a new standard for portability. At just 12.99, we'll begin to ship in a number of countries just a month, April 10th. Now we have some updates to the others as well. The MacBook Air being updated to faster 5th gen Intel Core i5 and i7 processors. They have faster Thunderbolt connectors, fast Thunderbolt 2. And the 13 inch configuration gets flashed it's now twice as fast as before. And those will be shipping starting today. And the 13 inch MacBook Pro has an update as well. It's getting the new Force Touch trackpad that we just talked about with MacBook, also in the 13 inch MacBook Pro. It's getting faster processors for faster core i5 and i7 processors, and it's getting twice as fast flash as well. And we've been able to get another hour of battery life out of it, now 10 hours of all day battery life. The Apple Watch. <clears throat> the Apple Watch is the most advanced timepiece ever created. Every Apple Watch has many different faces and many different configurations. <coughs> now, Apple Watch also has a new feature that's called glances. And glances allow you to check things very quickly for those things you check most frequently. You can even check your heart rate. And you can connect Apple Watch to Apple Watch. It's like having a coach on your wrist. Apple Watch also has a new workout app because you also learn that you can pay with Apple Pay using your Apple Watch. You can do your photos, you can control your music, and you can interface with Apple Watch with Siri just using your voice. You can connect to social media. We're super excited to see what we're going to do with this great new platform. So we've designed it with all-day battery life across a range of activities. The first collection is the Apple Watch Sport. Now the Apple Watch Sport starts at only $349 for the 38mm model and only $50 more for the 42mm model. Now the Apple Watch collection also comes in two sizes. 38 millimeters starts at only 549 and ranges to 1049 depending upon your selection of the watch band. The 42 millimeter is only $50 more. The Apple Watch Edition is something unbelievably unique and very special. They're also available in 38 millimeter and 42 millimeter sizes. Their cases are made from 18 and it's solid gold. Now, there will be limited quantities of the Apple Watch Edition. It is priced from $10,000. We're taking pre-orders beginning on April the 10th. The Apple Watch is available on April 24th, and it will be available in many countries throughout the world. <coughs> iOS 8.2 is available today for download. Doing that, I have a question. Yes. Uh, 
do the 38 and the 42 millimeter uh, watches do exactly the same thing, only the vision a little bit scaled down, or are there difference in function? Uh, they do exactly the same thing. <coughs> exactly the same thing, yes. Uh, I had read where you were going to be able to get rid of your car keys, your fobs. Has that been announced? Um, they did some discussion on that on the um, uh, on the keynote. If you watch the whole keynote, um, they had they, that that last gentleman on there who probably wasn't recognizable to many people here. He showed where he was opening his garage door from uh, work. Uh, his daughter called and said she was locked out. And, um, and your reflector's just not working. And um, uh, they, they showed him unlocking his doors and everything else. But And, and I would say, yeah, are you, you going to be able to do all that? Yes. Uh, but at a price, because you're going to have to have devices on the other end that are capable of, um, of those activities. Now, like I just got a new garage door put in, and um, it's iPhone compatible. So I can sit here and I can put my iPhone and open my, open my garage door. It'll tell me if it's open. Um, I can do that from here, I can do it from California, I can do it from China. Somebody called me and says, hey, I need to get in your house, I can just open a garage door from my phone. So in addition to what calls we can now, Butt open. <laughs> okay, butt open your, uh, yeah, butt calls and butt open your garage door, yeah. No. Um, it's, yeah, it's a little bit more complicated. Than that. You have to open up the app and be there and everything. That was, yeah. Um, um, the, um, how many people here are thinking about getting a watch? Um, yeah, I think it's going to be interesting. I haven't decided exactly which one I'm going to get, although I know I'm not going to get the gold one. Are you there Actually, they're talking about developing a platinum one. Um, okay. The iPhones, every year they come out with a new model. Yes. What, what, what's likely to happen with watches? You know, I haven't read anything on that, but I would imagine that they'll come out with a new watch um, in a year or two. So so when you buy the $17,000 watch? That's the whole point. You buy the $17,000 watch and it's obsolete and only worth uh, the amount of gold in it three or four years later. Um, but, Can I inject with that thought? Yeah. Apparently the watch is, is predominantly just a remote display and sensor. Yes. And all the, most of the apps and the functionality are going to be running in the iPhone. Correct. <coughs> so maybe the watch doesn't go up, doesn't become obsolete because the thing is changing as iPhone 6 becomes iPhone 7. Well, yeah, I think that's a good point, but I think that there's improvements to be made. One will be you know, battery. Uh, uh, battery life, and the other one will be the processor speed. They, you know, as, as they get more advanced with their processor, uh, they'll want to put a new processor in the watch. And the big item that's missing, I think, on the watch is it's not waterproof. And I think that there's, I think that they're going to work hard to, maybe not the second one, but by the third one, make it waterproof so that they can say, you can now use it for swimming. Certainly with, the, with all the fitness. With all the fitness stuff, exactly. Um, so um, th those are all good points. And, um, you know, I've sort of, thinking out loud here for a minute, I was going to get the sports edition, which is a cheaper watch, 400 bucks for the bigger one. Um, I'm going to have to look at the, the regular watch, which is stainless steel and, and has a sapphire crystal. And the only real reason for that is really the sapphire crystal more than anything else because I, mean, I bang my watches around and, and I know I have a, a, an expensive watch that doesn't lose value um, that uh, has a 
sapphire crystal, and I bang it, and I hit it on some things, and it just, it's really a hard material. So, um, at the same, so I'm sort of torn though, you know, do you spend a couple hundred dollars more to have this watch that you know that you can't bang up, only to, only to think that in a couple of years or a year you're going to replace it with another one? Uh, or for the first generation, do you, do you just go with the cheaper one and see where this thing all leads? Uh, I'll have to see. Um, there's all kinds of combinations of bands and um, and, uh, and the faces of the watches are, are, are very different. Um, the um, uh, I think it's it's going to be a good product for them, and I think there's a lot of naysayers out there saying that this is. Uh, not going anywhere, and I and I think it's way too early to tell that. And I think it, and I think it probably will take off, and I think it probably will uh, take off with uh, a lot of. I mean, one of the reasons I'm buying it is is for the health, <coughs> health stuff and the monitoring stuff, and that's going to do nothing but improve. I mean, now I you know I ride my bike and I've got these straps I'm putting on my chest <coughs> and, and so on for my uh, to monitor my heart and so on. This thing does it right on your wrist. I mean, it takes your pulse there. And then uh, they announced, I haven't read much more about it, but they announced one third party app that was going to be doing insulin testing just based on their app and have, having the thing on your wrist, which would be a huge step forward for people with uh, type 2 or type 1 diabetes just to be able to look at their watch and see where they're at on their sugar counts. Um, the, um, does it do, excuse me, that, does yeah. it do blood pressure? It does not do blood pressure. Wish it did. Yeah, that would be a good one. <laughs> yeah, it does not, do, does not do blood pressure. But um, uh, I, I think it's going to be, uh, I think they're going to sell a lot of these things. Uh, uh, do you have an opinion? You don't have an opinion. No. You have an opinion? As a financial person, have you studied or looked at the suppliers that uh, are involved on the Apple, on the app side? No, I have not. I really have not looked at the suppliers. I've done that in the past, and um, some of the suppliers seem to be, seem to do well. Arm, uh, uh, arm, I think it's Arm Holdings, I'm not sure, but they're the ones that make all the chips for Apple for the for the um, um, for the iPad and for the phone. I'm taking more in the medical. Oh, in the medical. No, I have I have not. Um, uh, I know that there were. Probably an investment question. Really. Yeah, um, that I know that they're working with some of the top medical uh, institutions in the country. They did go over that in the keynote. Um, to come up with medical apps, and I, I'd heard that they were having some difficulty with the FDA getting some of this stuff approved. Um, but um, I, I think you're going to see things there that are just going to that really are going to change the way people live their lives if they want to change. Um, so uh, I do have the. I, I think I can. Maybe now show the Johnny Ives. Do you want to see that? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Let's we'll see if I can get that to work since we're connected directly. George, you gotta get up and put, you gotta get the bows because the audio won't come through. <coughs> okay. Oh you're right. Yeah. Your foot is on my one. Oh, sorry. Mitch. Yes. Which is really a problem. I know, a problem. I had a real problem. The, uh, like a second wife. That's rude. Thanks, Jerry. Whoa, whoa. Who did? New York Magazine. Oh, yes, they had a great article on, on him. I saw that. Yeah. Um, he's really good. I wonder, I, I've never heard why. Maybe somebody in here has read why. Uh, He's never on stage. He always does these fantastic videos, but he's never on stage. And I think he, 
I don't know whether he has a shyness of that or he's not interested in it or, or what, but his presentations are always, I mean, he's done interviews, but he just always seems to, um, <coughs> oh, this will blow him away, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Isaacson biography of, of Steve Jobs uh, spends a lot of time talking about Johnny Ive, and, he, and he's one of the few people mentioned in the book for which nothing bad is it's said about. Him. Oh, did it? Oh, yeah, here we go. Which book was that? The Innovative? Andrew Isaacson oh, biography of Steve Jobs. Oh, the biography. Right. sound. An unparalleled level of technical innovation combined with a design that connects with the wearer at an intimate level to both embrace individuality and inspire desire. The watch senses that you're raising your wrist and then activates the display. You see an organization of apps that while new is somehow familiar. Navigation is fluid and vital. Magnifying content on a small display is fundamentally important. So we've developed a whole new interface specific to the challenges associated with a product this small. The digital crown is a remarkable input device. It fluidly zooms into apps. It enables nimble, precise adjustment. And critically, you can use it without obstructing the display. It's also the home button. Apps are designed for lightweight interaction. Smart replies and dictation let you respond quickly to messages. Glances let you swipe through information efficiently. And pressing the button below the digital crown instantly shows you friends you can contact in just seconds. And with digital touch, we've developed an entirely new way for you to connect intimately with others. You can get someone's attention with a gentle tap. You can send a, a quick sketch. Or you can even share something as personal as your own heartbeat. These are subtle ways to communicate that technology often inhibits rather than enables. These apps all take advantage of the flexible retina display. It's been laminated to a machined and polished single crystal of sapphire. That's the second hardest transparent material after diamond. In addition to the digital crown, we've had to invent other input technologies designed specifically for a product this small. So as well as sensing touch, the display also senses force, quite literally adding a new dimension to the user interface. Tiny electrodes around the display recognize the difference between a tap and a press. This provides instant access to a whole range of contextually specific controls. For the first time, and with great intention, We've designed not only what you see, but also what you hear and feel. We've developed a linear actuator that provides haptic feedback to complement your interactions. This taptic engine, combined with the audio feedback from our ultra-resistant speaker, creates a discreet and nuanced experience. At the heart of the watch, is a custom design chip that integrates many subsystems into one remarkably compact module, which is then completely encapsulated to protect the electronics. 
It's essentially miniaturizing an entire computer system onto a single chip. The zirconia bag has four sapphire lenses, infrared and visible light LEDs, along with photosensors, detect your pulse rate. Using its gyroscope and accelerometer, and the GPS and Wi-Fi from your iPhone, the watch provides a comprehensive picture of your daily activity. This allows it to establish and suggest goals and reward fitness milestones. The back crystal also houses a unique charging solution that combines our MagSafe technology with inductive charging. Completely sealed, it requires no alignment or exposed contacts. Apple Watch is incredibly accurate. It uses multiple technologies, keeping time to plus or minus 50 milliseconds. We have worked closely with horological experts from around the world to help us understand the cultural and historical significance of timekeeping. And this has profoundly informed our design. We know that wearing something all day, every day, becomes as much about personal preference and self-expression as functionality. So we've designed a range of watch faces. You can personalize both their appearance and their capability. Personalization extends way beyond the interface. We have designed six different straps and a mechanism that makes the straps easily interchangeable with a refinement and precision that's born of functionality. The sport band, in a range of bold colors, is made from a tough, durable, sweat and chemical resistant, high performance elastomer. The leather loop comes in a soft, quilted leather that conceals magnets for fastening and adjustment. We've used traditional leather, but in a new sports context that's designed for optimum comfort. The supple, handcrafted leather modern buckle closes with a solid metal clasp and wraps symmetrically around the wrist. The simple leather classic buckle references traditional watch vocabulary. And the stainless steel link bracelet has a slim deployment clasp that is contained within a 2.6 millimeter band. The Milanese loop is crafted from a fluid, flexible stainless steel mesh with a magnetic closure that has an elegant simplicity and is infinitely adjustable. Now, of course, we knew one size wouldn't fit everyone, so we also developed a smaller watch with matching smaller straps. From different cases and straps, we've actually created three distinct collections. The first, Apple Watch, features a polished case made from a custom alloy of stainless steel. The Sport Collection has an iron exchange cover glass and an anodized aluminium case that is 60% stronger than standard alloys, and yet it's incredibly light and durable. Apple Watch Edition is made from 18 karat gold that our metallurgists have developed to be up to twice as hard as standard gold.
creating beautiful objects that are as simple and pure as they are functional, well, that's always been our goal at Apple. We designed Apple Watch as a whole range of products, enabling millions of unique designs, unparalleled personalization, both in appearance and capability. I think we're now at a compelling beginning, actually designing technology to be warm, to be truly personal.
Yes. Yes. No. Um, I don't know whether somebody said it here or I just saw it on the internet that you don't have to have your watch, I mean your phone, with you if you're in the same Wi-Fi wi -Fi network. So if you had it on around the house and your network was active, you wouldn't have to have your phone on you. Exactly. Yes. Now, I'm not clear on how these two instruments are communicating with each other. Are they using Bluetooth? If they're using Wi-Fi, how's that going to work if you're out of your Wi-Fi area? They're, they're using Bluetooth. 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 But if you're in your Wi-Fi <coughs> setting at home, you won't have you won't have to rely on Bluetooth. You can you can, your phone could be in the other room and it can work over over the Wi-Fi network. Um, but if your phone's at home and you're on the Wi-Fi network here, it's not going to connect to you. It's not going to work. Yes. Would you periodically sync your phone with your watch? It'll it'll be done seamlessly. It'll be done seamlessly. Will you? The, the question was, will you periodically have to sync your phone with your watch? And that, I think that'll be done seam, seamlessly. Um, yes. Obviously, anybody near you who's a crook will be able to track what you send from your watch to the uh, phone. Uh, uh, has Apple said anything about security the, in that the, area? They have not said anything about security, and I'm wondering, you know, they talk about being able to just go in a store and just go like this and, and, and do Apple Pay without doing a fingerprint deal. Um, I haven't read much about that. I would think that, you know, that obviously your phone has to be on you so that it knows that you're doing that, and maybe therein lies the, the security, um, and they feel that that's enough. Um, and I don't know about that, the hacking between the device. That, I haven't read anything on it. Has anybody else read anything on it? Well, the, the credit card is on your iPhone, and so that has to be there to make the connection. Well, yeah, I think that that's where the security comes there. Your, your phone's got to be in your pocket when you throw the watch up. Um, now, when you when you do it, I don't know how many of you've done it, I've done it all the time, is you, know, you get your phone out, you hit the uh, passport, and you hit your credit card you want, you put your thumbprint or whatever on there, and it pays the bill. Um, this, if your credit card's on your phone, you just literally hit Apple Pay, and it's going to go like that. Um, so if somebody stole your watch and you and you were in the room within Wi-Fi distance, they could start <coughs> talking to you, I guess. Um, but I haven't I haven't read to I haven't read anything on the security aspects that you bring up. Have is you, there? Have you? No. My question was: Is there a, a find my Apple Watch function in the iPhone? Do you think? I haven't read anything on that either. No. Um, I hope there is. It would make sense. Huh? It would make sense. Um, I, I don't know. I don't know if it will. I, I, I don't know if it will send out a signal. I, mean, I don't want to send out a signal if your phone's there. So I, I don't know. It's sort of, you know, it's sort of mind-boggling. You think you pay four or $500 or $600 or whatever for a watch. I mean, I've got watches I paid four or five hundred dollars for. They were sitting home in a drawer, and they still work fine. And they're ten or fifteen years old. Uh, and I know when I buy one of these for four or five hundred dollars in ten or fifteen years, it, it probably won't work for anything. Uh, that's sort of it's sort of different. But I guess when you, yeah, you know, I'm trying to think think about that. And I guess you th I think about well, you think about a telephone twenty or thirty years ago. You know, you bought a wall phone. And you had it, and you kept it for years, and it always worked. Now you buy a cell phone every two or three years, and when they're done, you give it to your grandkids, and you'll get a new one. Uh, maybe it's not all that different than, than, than that sort of cycle. Sounds like this is basically just a very expensive remote control. Yeah. It's, it, it's, it's, it is. Uh, projecting it, what you're carrying on your waist onto your wrist. It's an extension of the phone onto your wrist. Because it's somebody, also it's somebody, a sensor, huh? But also a sensor. And also a sensor. It does a lot of other yeah. things. It does a lot of health things. Um, but as 
somebody pointed out, you know, in an article, you know, if you hey, if you're going to go take a run, be sure your iPhone's in your pocket because the watch isn't going to record everything unless the phone's somewhere on you. Um, so we'll, we'll see. I, I have a feeling, I could be wrong, I have a feeling these things are going to sell like hotcakes. Um, people are going to want to have them. Um, and if they don't have to get the first one, they'll, when they improve it with some tweaks in the next year or two, they'll get the second one. Okay. Uh, yes, one more question. The new MacBook Air, does anyone have a picture of the multi-pronged device that you're going to need to hook up your normal things? <coughs> and how much does it cost? It certainly won't come to the computer. George does. Um, they're actually um, in the Apple Store already, online. Oh, and, okay. um, they're like $29, dollars for the adapter. Um, some of them have three different uh, adapters uh, attached. You know, you can attach either HDMI or DVI or whatever. I mean, there's it's it's uh, I think it's twenty nine or thirty nine. So the question I had on that, maybe you just answered it, is there's only one adapter. It's place. not the air, it's the MacBook. It's the MacBook. Right. There's only one port on it. Right. right. So I'm thinking, okay, I want to plug my hard drive in there where I have all my iTunes stuff. Um, what's charging the device? Now, are you saying, that there's a multiple, multiple device that I plug in my... It's like that lightning adapter on your... Uh, so there'd be a couple places. I could charge the charger in on here and put my iTunes over here. Yeah, there'll be okay. a USB port on the other side of that. Okay, that answers my question. I knew they had an answer to that. Uh, they don't have it in the store yet, the actual mm -hmm. computer, do they? No. No. They're it. It's a, it's a tenth, the same as when the watches are going to be there? Well, the watches take orders on so. But they're going to have them in, on display in the store on the tenth, too. You can't buy it until it's the store. You can't get it. You can buy it. Yeah. But they're going to have them. So you'll be able to go in. You'll be able to, uh, as I understand it, you'll be able to go in on a tenth. You'll be able to see all the watches. You'll be able to try them on, try on the band that you might like. And then if you want to pre-order it, by appointment though. By appointment. By yes. appointment. Yes. You don't just walk in and look in and yes. browse. It's by appointment. It'll be All interesting. Right. This is turning into the watch meeting, so <laughs> yes. This isn't the watch question. Okay. <laughs> I'm using a, a Mac Mini uh, uh, driving a 24-inch display. And the reason I use it is because it's recommended for photography because it gives a better uh, color rendition uh, and uh, it's getting a little bit jaded and I'm looking to upgrade and I'm looking at this new MacBook and wondering how it's going to compare in power in terms of driving my 24 inch monitor if I want to use that <coughs> and uh, how fast it will be compared with a Mac Mini. Do you have I, anything I, on that? I do not know if it will even drive an external monitor would. Jerry has a one. Jerry. Oh, the only thing I know is that the because of the battery life that they talk about, they're using a lower power, lower capacity Intel chip. It's, it, it is not it is not a, a high performance Intel chip. And to what George was saying, you're going to have to go into this one port and come up with a cascade of adapters to get to your your display to your keyboard to everything else that you do. Uh, I don't think it's you know I, I don't know, but I don't think it's I don't think it's the, the thing to be a general workhorse. I think it's really for people who want to travel and, and like the flexibility of that. I, I would think that for for your needs, uh, and I'm not heavily into that. I know Mr. Kennedy is here. He might have some insight, but. I would think 
at a minimum, you'd want the new 13-inch MacBook Pro that they've just updated the processor and made the battery life longer, and it has two or three different ports, and it probably will support a monitor like you're talking about. Now, whether it will support it at this color uh, configuration that you're looking for for photos, you're going to have to really talk to a photo expert about that. One more thing. The, they did not refresh the 15-inch MacBook because they're waiting for a new generation of Intel chips. So sometime later this year, there will be a 15-inch MacBook Pro that will have a, a, a much more powerful Intel chip in it. But the 13-inch one, did they just go in their old inventory and just open the computers and put the new thing in? I, I, I think they there was said, a, little, a little bit of redesign done there because they indicated it has a bigger battery, a, a, an hour longer battery yeah. life. Now that could be because the chip that they put in it draws less right. and they just literally went in and changed chips. That, that, that could well be because it's not a complete redesign at all. But that does not have a retina display though. Yes, it does. It does. Yes. Okay. It has a new touchpad. It has a new touchpad too. Yeah, it has a new touchpad as well. And those are in the store now, George? Well, I think those are in the store now. I think he said they were. I thought they said they were. Yeah, I think he said they're in the store. Yeah. They're yeah, in the store I now. Said, the he years. said they're available now. Yes, Ruth. Really. The keyboard pops up. You're going to have a special device to type. What do you mean the keyboard pops up? If you're going to, in other words, you can probably send things. You're talking about on the, on the new 13? On, on the watch. Oh, on the watch. Yes. Uh, I think a, a, a keyboard doesn't come up. They talked about um, voice. They, they talked about voice using Siri to dictate your response, and they talked about pre-selected responses that you have, such as "I'll be there soon," "I'll call you in a few minutes," whatever. You'll so be able to. Won't be a there won't be a keyboard on your watch. No. Sorry, Ruth, you're going to have to wait. <laughs> I don't know how you can even see. It. I can't even see the keyboard on this. Uh, <laughs> yes. I have a question. It's an iOS question. iPad and iPhone. Yes. And mail. If I start the mail message. Yes. And I get into it, and then I get some other mail that takes my attention. Yes. And I switch over to that mail. Mm -hmm. My composing message is there. Was there. Yes. Is there a way to get back if I forgot to uh, save it before? Uh, yes. Uh, I'll give you a little uh, a demo on that. So let's see. Um, let's suppose that... Um, um, start a new message. I'm gonna, no, I'm not going to start a new message. I'm gonna, well, yeah, I'm going to reply to this message, okay? And I'm going to say, we need more, we need more snow. <laughs> sure you do. Okay. And then all of a sudden I get a new message. I, come, I see this message up here from um, DeMarco. And I say, oh, wait a minute, I want to see that. I just, I just go like this down. Then I go here and I look at this message, and then I, um, uh, I decide that, um, okay, now I want to uh, uh, I want to go down here and copy something out of this message. Okay, um, and I copy that, and now I go in here, whoops, pull it up too. I go here, and I pull this up, and I say, Okay, now I want to go here, uh, and I want to go, and I want to paste that part of that other thing in here. Okay, okay but the key was what did you exactly do? You, 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 you touch it right here. You touch it right here and drag it down. Okay. So you touch it here and just drag it down. Yeah. And the and keyboard it, will disappear. If you didn't do that, it disappeared. If you didn't do that, if, if you didn't do that, um, let me just see. If you didn't do that and just went to here, uh, it won't 
let me. It won't let me go anywhere else. And if I, what I would have to do is hit the cancel and then save draft and go yeah, through all that business. That's what I normally do. And that's what you normally do. And I've actually started using this. Uh, no, but this. what he's saying is that he does get, he does go to someplace else, and it just disappears. Well, it won't disappear if you go for cancel and then or you hit I save draft. That. I know that. That's, yes, that's the one I do. Okay, yeah. um, but if you um, if you didn't save it and went somewhere else, it came back. It won't be there unless you just pull it down. Yeah. And you can pull down several, so you can you know you can. Go here to this one, and uh, let's reply to this one. And um, uh, oh, wait a minute! Something else came in. I want to look at. So let's put this one down here. Now there's two of them down there. Here's, here's this one see the two. and this one. Mm -hmm. You just touch on the bottom. So, um, so in other words, you go down here, and it just it looks like there's one. Okay. But when I touch on it, it comes up and it cascades, and there's two of them. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Yes. I have another iOS question. Yes. Um, <laughs> since uh, uh, I guess we went to the first update of iOS 8, uh, my husband and I keep getting this message: password incorrect. Enter voicemail password. Anybody had that same thing? Yes. I had that last week and I spent hours and hours working on it. And I finally found the problem. Uh, and it was it was in the uh, settings where I had my I had changed a password and I hadn't changed it in the settings. And the reason I didn't pick it up was because it just said asterisk, 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 so I didn't recognize that it was my new password. So when I went in and put in my new password, everything worked fine. I, well, I, I Googled it, and there were two answers. One was to go into settings. I don't remember exactly what you had to do. And the other was you it had was, to, you it had was to come mail settings, not the, not the over. Well, this is voicemail. Yeah. Oh, OK. Oh, voicemail. Voicemail, yeah. Okay. So one, one, to, one said you had to go to your uh, provider for your phone, and the other said something about going to settings and doing something. So I don't know if it was because, well, we've uh, had our new phone since October, so I don't know uh, which is the best way to go. Anybody, nobody else has had that problem. I, I know that, I know, I've not had the problem where it just all of a sudden disappeared. But I know that when I've done a complete reset on my phone, I have had to go in and reset up and put that passcode for my voicemail. And I believe if I go, um, if I go into here, <coughs> and um, I have it on my iPad too. Um, Oh, sure, but let me just let me see, boys. Um, here, I've got a note on my an at t voicemail. I've got it in my notes, <coughs> and there's my codes that I have to go in and set up. Get off of there so nobody can get to my voice. <laughs> but I, I put my code from AT&T in my notes so that when they say, hey, you need to enter your code to activate your, to get access your voicemail, I know it's on my machine. I just search for it. Does that make sense? Yeah, I, I just never remember putting a code in for voicemail. Yeah, I've had to put it in oh, several yeah. times. Yeah, every time you, I have to. Yeah, every time you... Uh, Every time you do a complete restore, or every time you do go from iPhone 5 to iPhone 6. Okay, so where did you go to do that? I was not. Well, I mean, it, you, you went into your uh, provider. I have, I have, I have it in my notes. So oh, okay. Is, but I mean, where note. do you do it? Where do you do it um, in your? Well, I don't have the phone hooked up, but on, oh. on the phone, when you go to voicemail it, and hit voicemail, it'll say you need to enter the code. Right. Okay. So you won't be able to get your voicemail until you enter the code. And if you don't remember your code 
and you call AT&T or Verizon and tell them your life story, maybe they'll give you your code and let you reset it or something. Okay. But it does happen. I don't know why it would happen without mysteriously the way you described it. Right, it happens on both my iPad, my iPhone, and my husband's iPad and iPhone. The only thing I can think of is we got new iPhones in the fall, but this didn't pop up until we went to a new operating system. <coughs> That's, why it popped up. That's probably why it popped up. But you don't receive phone calls on your iPad. Do you? I know. Okay. But it's That's popping up on my yeah. iPad. That's yeah. what I'm saying. Yeah. I'm getting the same message on my iPad as I'm getting on my phone. Do you have your iPad set up to accept okay. phone calls? No. And one of the things that's going on is they're both local. I, I uh, passwords now, and they're uh, what's the one in the cloud? Anyway, you got a password for everything in the cloud, and if you're if it, for some reason it doesn't go to the central, that's not going to be recorded. We'll keep asking. Mine kind of went away. I I got in trouble one. I got a new computer and I went across and it just migrated. Never had trouble before. I sure have it now. And I broke something in the file and sure I can't get some of my huh. files open and uh, the documents. And so I, I did get them open by tapping them rather than trying to open them. But, uh, I think there's, it doesn't say anything there about it. It takes some time. It, it, usually when you get a new phone right away you have to do it, so I don't know why it took so long. Hey. If it's doing it on both devices, I would go to the Apple people. When, when it's doing it, when you're getting that message, uh, make an appointment and go and, and, and show them what's going on. Well, it just popped up here when I put my iPad on when I got here. Did you put it in the code? No, because I don't know what code you're asking me for. <laughs> is this a, you at and t AT&T, AT &T, yes. And what does it say? Put in your... up and um, sure enough it's right here 
AT&T voicemail note. I made that note on 10-24-12. If I push that, again, it'll, it'll come up and there's the note. It's, it's got my wife's and, and mine. So, um, but I use the notes a lot of different ways. I've got cookie notes for different recipes. Place to put your prescriptions. <laughs> your I've got my prescri I've got my prescriptions uh, are in there under my regular notes under medical pres uh, pres prescriptions. Um, and when I go to the doctor, and you know, it doesn't matter how many times you go to the same doctor, they want to write out your 15 pills that you're taking or however many, um, and all your vitamins and everything. I just go and print them out and hand it to them. Every yeah. time I go. That's what I do. Um, I also use that to use that list to create the list for the emergency data on the phone, on the new phone, where I have all my medications mm -hmm. and vitamins and everything listed there. Uh, yes, we're running out of time. Uh, do we do we have to get out of here right away, or can we answer your one question? Somebody come in at one. Somebody come in at one. So Jerry had a question. Uh, we'll. Take it up some other time. Yeah. I answered it for you, right? Okay. So, I'm um, sorry we didn't get more phone stuff in today, but the watch is a pretty interesting topic. Thank you for coming.